Gamers, have we got a big patch? The Elementalist mains were cowering in fear, ready for CMC's wrath to nerf them into oblivion. Guess what? Big Elementalist buffs. Blade Swarms have range now. Mantras are back uh, to how they were previously. Goodness me. We've got some big changes uh, to all game modes here, actually, across the board. Get your 50k Weaver benchmark ready to roll, because uh, this is quite the ride here, actually. This is going to be a bit of a meaty one. We'll try to go over. I'm not going to read every change here, because I'm not going to lie. Some of them are just like little quality of life, little little, uh, little, uh, little meme things that probably aren't going to be super impactful. But there's actually a lot of really good stuff here. So <laughs> buckle up, because this is a very exciting patch, okay, for pretty much everyone in the game, actually. Uh, some, you know, some things are definitely missing here, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Notably, one th well, I say we're going to get into it later. I'm going to get into it now. Notably, one thing that isn't here, actually, is there's not a lot of reworking to how boon application works in PvE, which is actually something that I was really expecting. Uh, that hasn't happened a great deal. There's a few things here and there that have altered this a bit, but I was expecting some relatively significant changes to stuff like spamming all your buttons off cooldown when you're playing Herald uh, or Scrapper, for example. Which I think has kind of degenerated the gameplay into something that's a little bit less fun, a, bit, a little bit less reactive, and just being spammy for no reason. That hasn't happened, but don't worry. Let's just leap into it right now with Elementalist. I'm going to scroll down to the change that everyone really cares about. It's Lucid Singularity. So, Lucid Singularity now causes overloads to pulse alacrity while channeling, in addition to granting alacrity when the channeling is completed. The total amount is the same. However, the important thing here is that, one, you are not going to get punished nearly as much if you, say, have to cancel your overload for whatever reason. But also, you can now immediately start applying Alacrity uh, on your Heal Tempest or your Condition Alacrity Tempest. Huge quality of life improvement is definitely going to make this build um, feel a lot smoother to play, a lot more enjoyable, I think. And to be frank, you know, usability is an important part of power, and therefore this is definitely a powerful change too. I do think that the Condition Alacrity build probably needs a bit more damage attached to it. Same with, say, a Power Alacrity build as well, like a Power Fresh Air Alacrity build probably needs a bit more damage. But this really helps out with the usability. And usability is something that I think should never be ignored in balance, and therefore I approve. And we'll talk about the P We'll do some PvP stuff in a bit, but to kind of round out the PvE stuff, oh yeah, I think this kind of speaks for itself, but big damage increases. It looks like around a 10% nudge, sometimes a 20% nudge, sometimes a double nudge on a lot of Weaver abilities. Um, we're looking at the auto attack chains in different elements. We're looking at uh, reducing the inconsistency, I believe, on the core lightning. Follow up lightning goes faster, when I always strike three times as well on core lightning. Oh, that's actually showing the Ranger Spirit tooltip there. Ignore that. This is actually the Weaver Sword 3 ability. Uh, <laughs> whoops. Uh, yeah, the tooltips here, they're not always going to be perfectly accurate, guys. It's a work in progress. I get to work in progress. Uh, but yeah, superior elements, more crit chance now. More damage on a whole bunch of skills. Dual skills, auto attacks. Weave self, uh, when you have air woven, now you're going to get more strike damage too, which might actually cause us to be the pick for power weaver as well. We'll have to see how that one ends up going, actually. Uh, it kind of depends, because, of course, weaver already has relatively good elite skills for damage output too. Uh, I think a really big noticeable thing here, and I like this trend, and we'll see this actually in a few other places too, Giving more crit chance to power builds, I like a lot. Because one thing that's very noticeable about power versus Condi is that it's very easy to kind of bake in a bit of vitality into condition builds, right? Celestial Trailblazer for relatively minimal damage losses, right? Ritualist too, of course. On power, that's a little bit trickier because you need to maximize three stats, power, precision, ferocity. Adding more crit chance, not only, of course, is a damage increase, because, you know, hey, critting is pretty good, but more importantly, uh, and that basically means you can fit in less assassin gear if you need assassin gear, or, you know, you can just go for more damage. But what's really cool about this is actually a synergy with the dragon stat. And I am a big fan of this. Uh, we actually see this on certain builds like Dragon Hunter, for example, uh, can have some dragon pieces. And not only can dragon stats basically be DPS neutral or a slight DPS increase, um, you get a lot more vitality on your power build. This really helps out builds like Weaver that have low health. So now your Weaver can maybe have 15,000 HP or maybe even a little bit more combined with the Jade Bot. And this stuff is actually pretty cool, I think. 
um, because it allows these builds to be a little bit less uh, squishy and allow the meta to be leaning a bit more towards power or a bit more balance between the two. Because one issue that really happens is that people play what's easy, right? And what's um, easy to be effective on, not necessarily what's the best. Power builds historically have actually dominated um, hardcore because power damage in general has the advantage over Conley damage because it's faster, it's snappy, right? And burst damage is very good, especially in PvE. Uh, however, Conley builds, because they have a lot of inherent tank to them a lot of the time, and they have a lot of, uh, and typically Condi elite specs and builds have a lot of defensives, right? Like stuff like Firebrand, right? Has like loads of really good defensives. Scourge has really good defensives. Those two things in combination have skewed the meta very condition favored because of how powerful that defensive utility is there. So I, this is just, broadly speaking, a pretty good philosophy in my opinion is looking at giving precision away for free in PvE because that allows you to make your power builds not lose any damage and still have a little bit more tank so they can be, again, improving the usability compared to condition builds, right? Uh, which is pretty nice, right? I think that's pretty good, uh, just overall. And I actually do like increasing the healing here as well. This is also something that I like. I, I love that Arena is leaning into this. I think they should do this on a lot of Ellie specs because Ellie is inherently hybrid, right? Because it has four achievements that do different things. You always have that. So giving it a bit more sustain, um, across the board makes Weaver nice. Weaver actually has a really nice combo if you play with Sword, right? Because you can um, Aqua Siphon, heal yourself, and then double blast it, right? You can go ahead and blast it into Earth immediately for a double evade, because, uh, you know, you have a double evade thing uh, on your Sword 2. Uh, all that kind of good stuff. Although Aqua Siphon, this is actually Sword 3, so ignore me there. Uh, but you get the idea, right? The Sword 2, go back, blast it, Easy peasy. If you got dagger off and blast it again, lovely. Uh, these are the things that I think can be made, can be used to make Ellie super super interesting and fun and reactive to play, and also really help it with some of its weaknesses, which is low utility, uh, lack of sustain, lack of support, and so on. Um, honestly, I actually think that this stuff with Weaver, it might actually get a little bit wild. Um, Weaver is going to pump in PVE next patch, uh, which in my opinion is correct. Realistically. Weaver, because it, it doesn't really have support compared to, say, Catalyst, Weaver should be like the Mega Glass Cannon, and Catalyst should be more of a bruiser, right? With the hammer giving it defense, extra defense, right? It's quite tanky because it has extra vitality and damage reduction attached to it. It has boon application baked into it with the Jade Spheres. So realistically, Weaver should be your all-out full-blast DPS um, for Elementalist, and then Catalyst is going to be your kind of frontliner with the hammer, getting in there, being durable, blasting away, all that kind of stuff. So I think this is kind of a good direction to go. Uh, there were a lot of um, changes too. Well, we're going to talk about staff in, in a bit, actually, but I want to quickly cover PvP Catalyst. Um, Catalyst has been absolutely broken in PvP recently, um, to the point where the meta comp is like, two or even five catalysts on your team. It is unstoppable. It's good at literally everything. It's insanely tanky, insanely fast, ridiculous damage output, um, and good in 1v1s. It's literally by far the best build in the game, not even close um, currently. It's being nerfed, and Dragon's Tooth damage, I'm really glad to see that go down. Honestly, I'm not even sure if this is enough, uh, to be frank. Sustain going down with Water Tread and damage, because this ability hit really hard, actually, on Catalyst. Uh, but yeah, you heal a lot less, you're going to do less damage. The blind spam and weakness spam being reduced is actually really nice, I think, for PvP and World vs. World. This was incredibly obnoxious to play against. Oh, 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 so annoying um, to play against, actually. Then on Catalyst, we go down here. The Elite skill, which resets all of your um, cooldowns, is going up to 75 on your current element. Um, Fortified Earth Barrier being reduced by 2. And then Jade Sphere cooldowns are all going up. These changes are significant, to be fair. And I think they... I, I think Arena is a little bit wise here. Um, they aren't nuking it. To be honest, I think if I was in their position, I'd be very tempted to nuke it from orbit because this build is super unfun to play against. Um, it is so obnoxious um, to deal with this build. Uh, so I'd be leaning towards nuking it. Personally, I think it will probably still be pretty damn strong, to be frank, um, after this. Actually, um, it's not dead by any stretch of the imagination. Definitely significantly weaker, though, with less damage output, but definitely um, still a strong option uh, across the board. I don't think it actually necessarily addresses um, the uninteractivity part 
super well. I think that's the really unfun thing about it. it, it the blind reduction is nice, but honestly, it blocks, and the double invulnerability on elemental celerity is just so annoying uh, to play against, because you can, of course, re uh, refresh Obsidian Flesh, right? And then, boom, double invuln. That stuff is annoying. It has also very high resistance uptime, but we'll have to see how this one plays out. It's a good nerf. It's a good start, but I think it actually might need a little bit more. I don't want Catalyst gone by any stretch of the imagination, but I think a build like this is very unhealthy for PvP. Um... And definitely needs to be looked at. I think nudging it towards using the dagger build, so it's like a hyper mobile damaging Roma, as opposed to like an open, like, so looking at focus basically and the interactions with Catalyst with focus might be something worth looking at, uh, but we'll see. I think this uh, change is actually uh, quite powerful too. Reducing the boon output that this thing has is very relevant because not only does this build um, have amazing damage, it also has amazing boons, empowering allies uh, with very high might uptime, resistance uptime, protection uptime, and so on. So looking at this cooldown, I think is actually pretty important but i think this build is actually still very strong uh for catalyst in pvp uh with that one and yeah there was also a few other pp changes looking at earth shield because the uh, you know hey elementalist is really good in pvp right now and earth shield is an absolute menace of an ability so basically reducing uh tectonic shift here uh on the block so you get less barrier essentially so a bit less sustain on your earth shield earth shield i think is still very powerful just the utility you can be able to share an invulnerability with an ally while having amazing skills like more magnetic aura uptime on your tempest for example on your catalyst you can pull people in you can cc people you can block people you have mobility on them Earthshield is still very, very strong. I think that looking at this ability and that particular conjured weapon is probably still going to be a bit of a work in progress. Again, Tempest is very much dominating support right now because of just how powerful it is. Uh, I think that Arena are actually going to look at making Firebrand a bit better to compete with it rather than necessarily like deleting Tempest. We'll see that a lot later, actually because we've got a lot to go through. But yep, Firebrand is definitely their targeted support build for a PvP. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later as well. But yeah, you know, they're, they're going in the right direction here. And Conjurer. This trait no longer reduces the cooldown of Conjured Weapon abilities. And again, this is a a targeted change to try and deal with this, of course, right? Um, is to try and mitigate the uninteractivity. And this is a bit of a theme, right? Like Arena are targeting, especially in PvP, builds that you can't interact with. Stuff that goes invulnerable, that blocks all the time, that's too fast for you to ever catch, that's permanently in stealth, right? This is what they're going after, which, let's go. Um, in my opinion, that is exactly what needs to be targeted because uninteractivity is what feels bad, especially as a new player. If you're a new player and you hop on board to a competitive game mode and you feel like you can't do anything against your, you know, your opponent's like completely running circles around you, never fun. Ever, 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 never fun. Uh, so that's very, very good. Uh, but yeah, oh, 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 just look at it, Dragon. I'm getting scared even looking at it. It terrifies me. <laughs> okay, and the final. Uh, no, we're not done. We've got so much for Ali here. Um, next up, let's talk about Staff. This is cool, um, actually. I think this is actually going to be most impactful in World versus World, actually. But Staff is getting juiced in all game modes here. Bit of a rework, bit of a rejiggle on how it functions. So, Windborn Speed, Super Speed, Baseline Elementalist. Super Speed is incredibly strong, right? So, this is an incredibly powerful effect. And bear in mind, it already removes Immob, um, Cripple, and Chill and gives you Swiftness. Now, it gives Super Speed as well for a short duration. Super nice utility in World vs. World. Really cool uh, for any kind of support build. I, uh, I do struggle a little bit with Heal Tempest running staff in pve that's going to be a bit of a theme like you do give up a lot by um not having warhorn warhorn is very nice um to be honest um because you have access uh to boon extension and a lot of might sharing but as we'll see here there's some very compelling stuff uh, here another one is transmute earth this is the flip skill of magnetic aura and now that gives stability in a 600 radius oof that is delicious in PvE, because of course you can max out your boon duration, and this is a very short cooldown. Bear that in mind, guys. Look at this. It's a 10 second cooldown. And of course, you can apply other magnetic auras to yourself in Tempest by, you know, using uh, Aftershock. You can use an Overload and give yourself a magnetic aura. So you can actually have a lot of stability application, actually, if you're, say, a Tempest. Um, and again, with a very large radius. And it's already a blast finish, too, which is pretty nice. Yeah, magnetic aura on rebound as well, if you want to go that direction. 
Uh, and again, bear in mind, it's the transmute, not the skill itself. So it's got a very short cooldown, as you can see here. That is a very good skill. Uh, this wasn't actually shown on stream. It was two stacks um, currently for, I think, around three seconds. And that was in PvP, though. So it might be a little bit different in PvE. It could be one stack in PvE, for example. But honestly, Staff Tempest actually has very nice stability application um, if you know what you're doing, right? You're going to have to be a bit careful with Earth Overload not to get locked out of Earth because you've got to be in Earth and then transmute your um, magnetic aura. But with careful play, this can actually be very powerful, I think. Um, a very effective skill indeed. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. And again, nice for World versus World 2, of course. Uh, a lot of Ellie builds use staff there. So kind of mixing that in is very nice. Gust. Oh, this is one of the worst skills in the game. One of the... Most core of core abilities ever. And now you can actually aim it. That's really nice. And it will even mark the kind of radius too. Or rather the, you know, the, the width of the ability, which is very nice. Very good quality of life change. Makes this ability way more usable and way less frustrating to use. Uh, really cool stuff in water. Your water order tech, you can target allies. That's a long time coming. That's surprisingly good, by the way. That's a really nice utility. Now, if you're playing Staff Tempest, you have very reliable ranged healing, much akin to Druid. So very strong there, actually. Um, Frozen Ground now has a default Frost Aura. You don't have to blast it to actually get a Frost Aura. So you can double up on your Frost Aura. Of course, in P. PvE, well, in all game modes, that's more boons potentially. Uh, that's more healing um, with the healing auras trait too. Very nice skill, actually. Uh, again, very nice in World versus World 2 because damage reduction is always good. And again, damage reduction in PvE is very nice. And then you can blast it again. Uh, hell, you could even combo, right? You could do Frozen Ground um, with a Shatterstone, go into Earth, Dodge Roll for... Um, uh, dodge roll for a blast finisher, eruption for a blast finisher. You can then magnetic aura for stability, transmute it, uh, and then that's going to go ahead and uh, also blast it for another frost aura. Very strong skill, very versatile, right? Uh, very, very good. But I guess you're not getting the healing aura trait because you need a lacquery now. Unlucky. I kind of miss not having both those together. That is one thing that makes me sad. Choosing between healing auras and alacrity, that's a little bit depressing. But hey, I mean, heal Ellie getting juiced this patch anyway. We'll we'll deal with it. Uh, Geyser, healing is going up in PvP and World versus World. I mean, I, I know that everyone is like dreaming of having heal Ellie in PvP, but honestly, with staff that is, but I very much doubt it. Like, you're just too squishy. There's so much damage. You're going to get farmed completely, I think. I don't I don't see it happening, to be frank. I don't think even Earth Shield can save you from that one. Uh, but hey, you heal more now in World vs. World. And I think, again, just trying to encourage this healing staff gameplay um, in World vs. World a little bit. And you can uh, also see this extra functionality too. The skill heals allies for each Condia removed. Really nice functionality upgrade. Uh, that's very powerful, by the way, um, in PvE. When there's any kind of encounters, drop that down and you're going to be sustaining people big time, actually. Oh, well, that's a very, very nice. Uh, and two Condies removed. That's a very heavy condition spell now. Bear that in mind, guys. A very heavy condition removal spell um, for PvE. So you can just precast this and then boom. Condies deleted. Deleted, I tell you. And more changes too. Flame Burst now blinds. This is a nice utility increase in PvE. Previously, you'd have to take Blinding Ashes in order to basically access this type of uh, interaction. But now Flame Burst, you just automatically blind stuff. Blind is good in PvE, by the way. Obviously good in uh, competitive too. Uh, but yeah, really nice little extra change. Uh, and intelligent usage of that ability is going to be quite powerful, actually. Uh, it's going to be pretty good. Not too bad. And Burning Retreat here as well. Reduce cooldown from 20 to 18 seconds. I mean, I, mean, I guess that's pretty nice too, right? Uh, yeah, and you thought it was over for Ellie, guys? Oh, no, 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 no. Arena is owned and operated by Ellie Mains. And that's why we've got more cantrips got significantly buffed across the board. Uh, basically, they get the cooldown reduction for free. So Soothing Disruption, the counter trait, no longer uh, actually reduces the cooldown of cantrips. And I actually want to quickly mirror what Arena said about this. And I think this is a good philosophy to have. Basically, they said that they ran into a lot of balance issues, particularly on Thief, where they had to nerf certain abilities... Um, directly, right? Increase the cooldowns of those abilities because they were overperforming to such a high degree. This is particularly like the shadow art stuff, right? Um, with the deception stuff. Um, and this was a big problem because basically they nerfed the ability so hard um, that the trait line became like more mandatory, basically, because the, the abilities were useless unless you had the trait line and they want to decouple abilities from trait lines so it's it's like it's a nice bonus to have it but it's not necessary because this is a really big problem with certain things in the game right is the cooldown reaction was so strong that the ability was basically bad uh, unless you took that 
uh, that trait, that particular trait, which really limited your options and, of course, really railroaded you into making certain decisions with your builds. And I think this is good. This really allows ArenaNet to make the enhancement traits quite powerful, uh, but by decoupling the recharge reduction, just making the abilities a bit better baseline, it means that you can actually see these abilities get used in lots of different builds without having to really dedicate to that particular trait line, which is pretty cool, actually. The changes themselves, I mean, they're kind of nice, I guess. Um, I think Ellie utility skills are pretty competitive, and these aren't that impressive, to be honest, because uh, not a lot of them do anything to the group. They're not group support abilities, so I think that... Uh, I'm struggling to see a lot of these, um, see a lot of play, but it's nice to looking at it. I really, would really like a lot of group support to be added to Elementalist Utility Skills, um, so that you can kind of fit those into your build and be a bit more useful. I think this has always been Ellie's problem, that you're a bit, you're a bit selfish a lot of the time. Your utility skills just do damage, as opposed to being utilities. So, moving in that direction would be pretty cool. Yeah, you have some basic reworks here. You get Barrier on Armor of Earth and the cooldowns down. In general, this type of trade, by the way, is good. You'll see here that it's reduced duration, 6 to 4 seconds, but the cooldown goes down as well. In general, this is a good trade. Being able to, say, use your stun break more often and have, like, a shorter window of value is usually better. A lot of the time, you end up wasting boons rather than, um, rather than like, needing more of them, right? So this type of deal is good, um, just overall. Ether Renewal. This is actually a very powerful skill, funnily enough, right? It's a two-second channel, and it removes eight condies and heals you significantly. Does see play on a few kind of a few like glass cannon builds, helping sustain them. Like I think some people play this on Fresh Air Weaver, for example, uh, and a few other like very aggressive builds that need some kind of condition cleanse to sustain them um, between like burst windows and so on, uh, which is pretty cool, I guess. Cleansing Flame has charges now. Lightning Flash, twenty-second cooldown in PVE only. Hey, look, we're nearly at Blink, right? Nearly there. We have that three hundred ninety-nine damage instead of a stun break so uh you know and, and 300 less range but hey you know I, I think it is worth noting it's a funny example to bring up but bear in mind uh different builds and different versions have asymmetry like having a stun break teleport on elementalist uh would be disgusting in pvp compared to blink right and that's because tempest already has so many really good options for survivability and getting out of sticky situations and sustaining itself same thing with catalyst right um, so just copy pasting abilities doesn't work because classes are balanced differently, right? Let's not even talk about shift signet. That is a disgusting skill. Oh my god. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and some quality of life to kind of round things out and a little bit of uh, some maybe unintended stuff here as well. So burning speed and earth and rush. Now, um, if you have a target you'll stop moving when you reach that target. So it's like a little charge attack. Now, this is actually a pretty nice quality of life for some kind of DPS elementalist build that uses dagger, but there's a bit of a caveat here. Um, this ability, Burning Speed, a, a lot of your damage, especially if you're playing a Condi or hybrid build, is coming from the firewall, right? The little burning patches. If it stops and it kind of doesn't put the burning patch onto your target, then this is going to introduce some really weird gameplay. In other words, if you want to be effective with this ability, you'll have to untarget and then use the skill through the boss to basically apply the burning stacks and then retarget the boss again afterwards. It's a bit weird. Um, yeah, or maybe you could have to be inside the hitbox to get full value out of it rather than outside the hitbox. So there's a few things you can do here, which is a bit weird. Um, to be honest, might be a bit unintended, but the goal here is clearly for uh, quality of life overall. Um, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. I think, is that it for Ellie? I mean, wow. Ellie is happy days. You're still good in PvP. You're pumping in PvE. Uh, Tempest gets way better. Staff is absolutely awesome. Gonna be really fun to play, I think, in World vs. World. And definitely a robust option over uh, Dagger Warhorn in PvE. Although, I think I'd probably still lean a little bit towards Dagger Warhorn most of the time. Unless you really need heavy stability application. Which I guess is good, right? Like, maybe you actually you are a bit situational. Maybe sometimes you actually want to go uh, and play Staff. Right, instead, because you need that very high stability um, in certain encounters. Kind of mirroring a firebrand or something like that. So, you know, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, stay tuned for more PvP catalysts. You guys aren't done yet. There's going to be another hammer blow to you guys, okay? Like, you got away lightly on this one, right? Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you need ranged healing stuff, it's cool too. All right, let's move on. And don't worry, Ellie, I think, was the biggest one. Uh, we'll be able to crank through things a little bit quicker now. Engineer! Uh, so, 
very basic stuff here, some quality of life, after cast reduction and fragmentation shot, and uh, cast time significantly reduced on poison dart volley as well. And they're actually buffing Condi Mech overall. If we scroll down here, um, basically, chemical rounds condition damage now correctly applies to your mech. Um, serrated steel now functions with the mech when it's active. Incendiary powder now also functions when the mech is active. So basically, more Condis when you're playing Condi Mech. And bear in mind, Condi Mech is already good, okay? So this build is going to be a bit of a pumper. Right? This is going to be a bit of a juicer, I think, um, if you're a mech enjoyer. Uh, that's for sure. Um, very, very powerful indeed uh, in that regard. Uh, and just as a bit of a side note here, I actually do think that targeting overly long aftercast is a very intelligent direction for ArenaNet to go. Uh, reason being here, it's a weird untelegraphed mechanics that you typically won't encounter very early on in your Guild Wars 2 journey. You, you know, you'll learn about aftercasts it's a pretty advanced mechanic, right? It's something that is requires you to look into the game and really pick apart, pick it apart, right? Um, a little bit. So I think targeting aftercast is very good with helping new players get into the game and be effective because you can definitely get screwed over um, by aftercast on certain builds. Um, you know, Guardian I think is is a bit of a big one, and Reaper too actually with um, canceling the aftercast on Gravedigger. Uh, is these are all pretty important things that are weird. They're weird mechanics. Uh, utility goggles, slight buff. I mean, <laughs> CMC likes this skill, I think. He's a big role player. He wants those utility goggles. He says that eventually it will remove all condies and then maybe you'll start seeing play there. I mean, I don't know. I do like that they're trying to do this. I, I really love this. Um, we saw this with the current PvP engineer build, actually. There's a lot of different utility skills and heal skills that kind of bursted onto the field by buffing them overall. So I think that making sure that all abilities are competitive, I think, is a really nice change. So as, as much of a meme as this ability is um, historically, I actually think this is pretty cool. I, I like the direction they're going here, actually, uh, by making these skills as competitive as possible. No shit, right? Um, Scrapper. Reconstruction field. Uh, reduce cooldown from 25 seconds to 20 in PvP and World vs. World. And chemical field. Reduce cooldown from 25 to 20 seconds. So basically the combo fields are going down here a little bit. And also a bit more protection application for PvP and World vs. World. You know, funnily enough, this probably is a little bit because of how strong other supports have been. Like, Scrapper did get nerfed um, somewhat significantly uh, to the point, and of course, Druid got buffed alongside Vindicator, where you are actually seeing a lot of supports start to somewhat outcompete um, uh, Scrapper, actually, like the God Emperor for a long time. It, it did get hit pretty hard, actually, uh, with these nerfs. And now you're going to have a little bit of compensation for that there with some more boon up time and, of course, some more combo field ability as well, which is a pretty, uh, you know, it's uh, it's pretty cool stuff. I actually, you know, this is going to be a little bit of a running theme here, but I actually kind of would like to see some of this stuff go over to PvE as well. For example, giving Scrapper more prot up time uh, overall on Reconstruction Field, that would actually be a really nice change uh, in PvE. Because Scrapper, it's it does see a good chunk of play, but I think Herald is so strong, it does overshadow it. So I think Herald needs to come down a bit, and Scrapper could probably use a bit more defensive utility. Maybe it does make up for it with the revival potential that it has, which is actually very strong in the hands of a, you know, a, a player who knows how to use it. Uh, so I do quite like that. But still, I think uh, I, I do like, I like boons. The meta is driven by boons in Guild Wars 2, right? Boon application is king, especially in PvE, but actually all game modes too. So I'd love to see boon application be improved across the board for a lot of supports and DPS players too, actually. Um, I think bo uh, DPS players applying boons, look, we've got to give them something to do, right? Right now they're just pressing buttons in order, right? Lazy buggers. We've got to make sure they're actually playing the game. Very cool stuff. Damage dampener. This trait has been replaced with Rapid Regeneration. Rapid Regeneration heals the Scrapper while they're under the effects of either Swiftness or Super Speed. If I recall correctly, this is how it used to be. Or this this was how it was originally, I think. Or there was a very similar trait to this. I actually kind of like Damage Dampen. It's a cool effect. You know, you have staggered damage very much like a Brewmaster Monk um, in World of Warcraft. I think this is actually a really cool mechanic, to be honest. But there's actually realistically probably makes us a bit stronger particularly in pvp uh, you'll notice that these are pvp changes they want to bring scrapper back in pvp um and this will really help with that giving scrapper a bit of passive regen is really going to help um give it some sustain when it isn't necessarily attacking that means because right now all of your sustain on scrapper is tied to attacking if you're not attacking you're getting pressured you've got nothing right basically this changes that a little bit now you can say okay i've got my swiftness i've got my super speed this means that i'm actually able to sustain myself a little bit better and you know be on the front lines and brawling or maybe be in a 1v1 for a little bit longer
Um, so I think overall, this is a cool balance change. I do like this mechanic of damage dampener. Maybe it could be brought back uh, somewhere else um, on, the, on the class, but still not bad. Very basic. Um, change it to applied force. And it's honestly so funny. Look at this. You now gain 20 bonus power from might. That, that's nearly doubling the effectiveness of might, guys. Because might baseline is 30, right? And now you're going to get 50 power per stack of might. So what does that actually equate to? That is... Uh, it's going to be 25 times 5, 125 extra power. Yeah, and this is a very basic change. It's going to be a robust DPS increase to Scrapper, right? Uh, specifically full DPS Scrapper, which I like. It's not the quickness build. It's going to be specifically um, the full DPS build. I like that. Um, I think full DPS Scrapper is a pretty cool build. Did get out power crept a little bit in the last few patches, so it's cool to see it get a little bit of a change. A few things with mech here. Um, so, first and foremost... Um, mech had a lot of bug fixes. So power mech was underperforming um, in, you know, and in general, mech, the mech was not doing as much damage as it was supposed to be doing um, because of weird glitchy auto attacks, right? Um, very weird, very strange. Just take it from Anet. They fixed it now. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. And reducing the rain ship is quite nice, by the way, because this means that um, the mech won't get stuck out of the hitbox as much. So it should, in theory, be a little bit stickier, improving the playability of mech. I think it should be, um, without necessarily directly micromanaging if you're, say, on a support mech as well. Uh, they also fix a lot of bugs. So basically, you know that nerf where they said, hey, you don't get the stats. The mech loses stats if you're far away from it. Uh, good news. That nerf actually did absolutely nothing because it turns out that a lot of the boons um, that were the mech was applying didn't use the mech's boon duration. It used your boon duration. So that entire nerf did nothing. What blows my mind, guys, is think about that. That means that that game-breaking bug was in the game since launch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that's fun. Uh, but anyway, they've now fixed that. Um, and now the mech will correctly uh, use its own boon duration uh, when it's applying boons, which is actually a significant nerf, by the way, combined with that, you know, the mech moves away. However, they've kind of compensated it for this a little bit um, because the concentration inherited by the mech has now gone up from 100 to 150%, which actually really alleviates that 50% stat drop, especially now that you're allowed to be 10 seconds apart rather than six. I think I'd actually re increase the duration here. I I think the, the threshold is actually too low on this still. It still feels kind of annoying to play with because the mech can go walk about pretty easily. The AI isn't super smart. I'd maybe increase that to 600. Um, Make no mistake, heal mech is still going to be incredibly strong. Uh, to be frank, I, I think that Anet could even look at improving some areas of heal mech, weirdly enough, actually, because of how powerful um, Druid is in particular right now. Um, and I think that um, builds like... Honestly, I actually expect Heal Herald uh, to have a little bit of a pickup, because uh, that build is actually surprisingly good right now. It's on hardsuck.gg. Go check it out. Um, heal Druid is amazing. Heal Tempest is definitely going to see a lot more play these days as well because uh, of that. So yeah, don't worry. Heal Mech, in my opinion, is still a rock solid choice across the board. Barrier is just still so incredibly strong. Um, and, and a well-played Heal Mech can really deliver a lot of value to the team. But Druid is still a very, very powerful option. Uh, in fact, a lot of the times running one Druid is super nice. Kind of maybe blending that in with a Mech or with a Tempest or something like that. It's very, very strong. Yeah, Comni Mech is going to pump. It is going to blast. Very nice. Hey, thanks for the uh, raid, by the way, Diva Cosplay. It's very kind of you. Right, so that's it for NG. Not too much there, but some interesting stuff. Guardian, let's do this. Oh, yeah. Arena, have heard your prayers. You white girls want Power Dragon Hunter back on the menu? Good news. ArenaNet have put it back on the menu at least a little bit. Uh, TLDR on all this stuff, we're looking at about 10% more damage on most of the key abilities. Really nice usability. Whirling Wrath doesn't slow you down anymore. That's actually really nice. Um, also quite nice for uh, World vs. World 2, I think. Uh, if you're playing a Greatsword Willbender, for example, so you can kind of keep up. But really nice quality of life for PvE too. Sword auto attacks going up. Again, approximately 10%. Uh, symbol... Symbol 4, or, or sword, uh, Greatsword 4, damage up by about 10%. Again, all this stuff, a little bit 
about 10% across the board. Um, and the sword trait now has a free cooldown reduction too. You do take that trait anyway because it gives you stats, but still, rare judgment damage is going up too. Um, basically, Dragon Hunter is going to do more damage, which is really cool. Actually, uh, I think that's, uh, it's nice. You know, it's really good. And I actually want to kind of talk about DH specifically here as well, because it's not just damage. And I think that we can kind of interpret Dragon Hunter's, um, Dragon Hunter's, uh, purpose here, right? Notice how the Virtue cooldowns are going down. So, Wings of Resolve, 25 seconds. Shield of Courage, 50 seconds. These are very powerful defensives. Look at this. 4,000 AoE heal on your DPS build. And a mobility skill. That's actually very nice. Reducing this cooldown, I think, is actually a really cool way to make Dragon Hunter slightly more of a... Not necessarily, like, top DPS, but a really rock-solid DPS build that can heal allies, that can reliably block and absorb damage for the team, can take stability with Stand Your Ground, while having very nice DPS. Like a utility-focused DPS, which, personally, that's actually good. Um, I think glass cannons are fine. However, and that's kind of where Willbender could potentially kind of come into play, I think, as more of a glass cannon. But Dragon Hunter, if you think about the way it is in terms of its design, it is more of a versatile DPS that isn't necessarily all about doing damage that actually really brings some support to the table as well. Um, so I think this is good. Pushing it in that direction is actually pretty nice, uh, in my opinion. That's the, the way to go for sure. And they made virtues a bit more, um, a bit more playable too. Unscathed contender, uh, you get seven percent damage while you have over ninety percent, so scholar rune, and another seven percent with um, aegis, so a total of fourteen percent. That's maybe a little bit um, stingy in PVE. They maybe could have gone a bit further and basically given it like the full damage, so made it like thirteen percent when you have aegis to make it exactly how it was before. You just it's just better on average. I think weirdly enough, there's actually a bit of a target um, at. PvP. Dragon Hunter in PvP is actually a complete pub stomper. And part of that is because it has these massive damage modifiers that can just eviscerate people um, if you are able to sustain your Aegis that just completely crushes people if you have all these modifiers going. So then they're actually looking at kind of toning that down. But don't worry, they're giving it straight back to you with these hammer changes. Oh, these are fun. These are fun. So symbol protection, the slowest skill in the entire universe. Your symbol is now going to go way faster. This is actually relevant, by the way. Not only for PvE DPS, really nice DPS increase if you fancy using Hammer. Hammer, one of those weapons that's been a little bit abandoned, uh, thrown into uh, thrown into nothingness, I guess. Uh, but, good news. Uh, now, you can go ahead and use Hammer if you want to, and you, know, you can give some protection there. You know, it could be good on maybe a support build, but that's the fun stuff. This is the fun stuff. Zealot's Embrace. You grant barrier while striking an enemy, helping you survive and brawl a little bit more um, in a kind of team fight scenario. But... Banish. Look at this. This skill now marks the enemy for five seconds. Mighty Blow, Hammer 2, the big nuke, will consume the mark to teleport to the target. That is so cool. Uh, what a fun interaction. So what you can do here is you could, is you could Mighty Blow, uh, you know, you could judge intervention, Mighty Blow in, bonk them with Banish, and then follow up with, say, a Zealot's Embrace to immobilize, and then bonk them again with another Mighty Blow. Some kind of combo like that. I think this is really cool. I think they've got to be careful with this. You know, um, we're going to have to see how this plays out. Hammer Guard is actually somewhat playable right now. There are, I think, a few Willbender builds that play it. Uh, but given how fast Willbender already is, you could end up being an absolute menace with this setup. You're going to be very fast uh, and very sticky, actually, with this build. Core Guardian and, in general, DPS Guard has historically been very powerful in ranked back in the day with Core Guardian. And, of course, Willbender was very strong and still is, actually, in the hands of a skilled player for ranked, at least. Um, this could make this really scary because, bear in mind, there's a lot of very powerful crowd control that, unless you have stability, it's very hard to get away from, particularly stuff like the... Um, you know, the ring. Ring of Warding is super scary, actually. But pretty big. Pretty damn big stuff there. And yeah, I actually... This will be a shout-out. That's a good point there by Spike, actually. This will actually give you the um, boons from Willbender, the resistance, right? Um, what's it called? It's like uh, Phalanx or whatever it is. Uh, the, uh, the ability. 
Yeah, yeah. So this is a shadow step, I imagine. So you'll be able to actually get loads of resistance too, which is very powerful, of course. Um, but yeah, cool stuff. I do like Hammer in PvE. I remember the old days, guys, when you play Hammer Guard as a DPS. Hammer Dragon Hunter. That was some good stuff. You know, that was good. And kind of further talking, to go back to DH a little bit, um, they tried to make some of the traps um, a little bit better. Um, so you get more protection now, trying to make DH a bit better, compared to a bit more sustain there. Light's Judgment now also uh, has a 20 second cooldown as opposed to 30 and now reveals. You know, some stealth counterplay is always good, right? Stealth is... And, and you think about DH is a lot of stealth counterplay because you can reveal with your F1 as well. Uh, so maybe it's supposed to be the Thief Slayer, right? Dragon Hunter, the, the answer to Thief. Or maybe Mesmer too, I guess. Uh, Fragments of Faith also is lower stability duration in PvP and World vs. World with a lower cooldown. Again, this is a good trade a lot of the time. Uh, and Hunter's Determination. This is kind of a trait that nobody really used, to be honest. Um, but this one has now been reworked. It now causes all elite skills... Um, to break stuns on activation. That's kind of a pretty interesting trait, right? Like, that's an interesting trait. I'm not sure if it's going to see a lot of play, though, because it actually has some very strong competition. But honestly, maybe. Um, that's going to mean your, your renewed focus will stun break you. Uh, that's going to make it so your elite trap could potentially stun break you as well. That's a really nice thing to have in your setup, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, I know the reveal isn't new, guys. I said the days is new. Um, so I don't know. It's an interesting one. I'm not totally sure about, though. In general, DH really commits to its damage, right? There have been a few more sustainy, I guess, kind of bunkery um, Dragon Hunter builds, and this could definitely go in that direction, right? I mean, look at this. That's going to be, um, a, 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 like, a lot of potential free stun breaks on your skills, but I uh, don't know. It doesn't give Aegis instability anymore, right? I think. Um, that would be kind of broken if it did both, I guess. But yeah, oh yeah, my green screen. I've, I've run over it with my chair. Heavy light. And this kind of goes into the PvE thing, I think, a little bit. It also does help, actually, in PvP and World vs. World, of course. But I think a big thing here is that Spellbreaker uh, recently got reworked, the hammer build, right? And now you have, like, a lot of stability application. Um, a lot of stability application on... Um, when you use CC skills on targets. Heavy Light is going to be a little bit like that for DH now, right? So if you spam a lot of CC, you're going to have, like, very high stability uptime in general in PvE, which is actually pretty interesting. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, and that really helps just be, again, that kind of, like, utility, slightly tankier damage option for PvE, which, in general, by the way, is always what you want. If you look at the builds that do well, right, what are the builds that do well? It's not the full glass cannons. The full glass cannons, in general, suck. The builds that do really, really well are the medium DPS with great utility. Those are the builds that do well. Always have, always will do. I'm going to keep saying this until people get it. Um... <laughs> You don't necessarily want to be a glass cannon. Yeah, it's a shame they didn't buff longbow, actually. I, I would like to see ranged options for especially power builds actually get improved. Except Virtuoso. Um, but, yeah, that's something that is notably lacking here. Some reworks to say how longbow works in PvE. Uh, but, looks like they're nudging it a little bit more towards the sword direction there as well. But there you go. <laughs> and we're not done yet. This patch is colossal. That's right, gamers. And we'll see this with Mesma a little bit later as well. Gamers, 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 gamers. Mantras are back as they used to be. So now, mantras. You have the three charges and the final charge mechanic is back. So in other words, Firebrand Mantras, three charges. First two are the same, the little small effects. Third effect will put the mantra fully on cooldown and has a much stronger effect. And then you have to recharge it after a cooldown. Uh, now, you might go, no, my quality of life. Good news. Aina actually thought about this and they have actually given us the best of both worlds. In my opinion, this type of design with mantras is significantly better. It's way more interactive, way more decision-making, way more interesting skill design that really differentiates between different types of mantras and gives them a lot of flair and potential usages. And, of course, counterplay in competitive modes, which is super important, by the way. Zero counterplay abilities always suck. Again, remember what I said at the start, right? We're looking at um, removing uninteractivity from the game, and mantras are absolutely very uninteractive a lot of the time. Now, that's changing, which is very, very good stuff. And hey, we got our cool spell effects back too, right? Yeah, not so bad. But anyway, quality of life. Check this out. So when you're out of combat in PvE, your mantras, boom, immediately charge automatically. 
So great, we now have the best of both worlds. We have better ability design, and you don't have to sit around doing the, you know, going like, oh, mantra before a fight, before a pull, right? Yeah, boom, immediately. Lovely. Uh, I actually do think this is a really nice um, just design overall. I like the, I do like the charging thing because it really, it really adds a lot of decision making where it's like, okay, if I'm going to go all out, we, I think I can win. If we go all out with this, I'm going to, you know, completely burn everything I've got for one final push. If you make that call correctly, it's very rewarding, right? Because you've used your ability correctly. But also means that your opponent, say in competitive mode, can punish you. Because they go, ah, they use the final charge. That means they're going to have to recharge that. I can interrupt them. And it also means on the defensive end, it's like, okay, I've got to back off and kite. I need to recharge my mantra before recommitting. I've got to avoid getting interrupted. I've got to make sure that it actually lands. Um, so I think this is in general really good. Um, to be honest, in PvE... If you don't want to engage with this mechanic, you won't have to. Like, that's the good news here. Because some people are going to hate this because they don't like how the charging works. Good news, you probably don't necessarily have to actually care. Um, and the big reason for this is you can just use two charges and just leave the final one there charging forever. It means you get a le little bit, um, you get lower burst boons, but overall, um, it doesn't functionally change. I think that's to your detriment, right? Like intelligent use of the final charge, I think will actually really differentiate between a good firebrand and a great firebrand. But still, I mean, you know, that's that's your prerogative, I guess, right? That's your prerogative. Um, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. They also have a complementary change here with weighty terms. Um, and this means that your final charge and weighty terms will now actually give you an, a page back on firebrand. Pretty cool interaction, actually. Uh, and I think we'll see some really fun interactivity potentially on Heal Firebrand, actually. Um, or, or in general, on some of the DPS builds, too, for like a last full burst. Or an emergency page to then use a defensive. So you can basically be in a you can be in a tome, right? And go like, oh shit, I need an extra page for my uh, defensive, for my stability or something, or for my reflect. You can burn a mantra, make that trade-off, make that decision, and then get an extra page immediately. I kind of like that. I actually think it's pretty cool. I don't mind that um, at all, actually, in that regard. Um, and also, of course, has ramifications in PvP for a very similar factor. And that was actually a big focus here. Looks like they're trying to bring Firebrand back in PvP. I'm not totally convinced that these changes are enough. There's basically a lot of um, page cost reductions and core directions and a few value increases um, across the board. I do still think that Firebrand is pretty weak. Uh, to be frank, I just don't think it can survive, like, well enough. Guardian is quite slow and immobile right now and doesn't really have a lot of damage absorption. The meta right now in PvP is very much about you need to mitigate. You can't outheal. You can't outsend. No, you can't do it. That's too much, right? That's why Tempest is great. Shocking Aura, Magnetic Aura, Obsidian Flesh, Earth Shield, right? That's what really um, keeps Tempest being so strong in the PvP meta. Firebrand is much more absorption right it, it tries to buffer um uh, damage and then kind of sustain it and that it didn't know you, you you can't you can't do it there's too much damage right now so i don't see it having enough sustain uh to really survive even with these changes but i actually would like to see the support meta really get shaken up because support can really dictate how the flow of the game goes and i think having different supports in the pvp meta is one of the most important things i think having two is nice but honestly i want to see more ideally you'd see a huge amount of support variety because that can really change play styles which is very very cool stuff um increase the number of stability stacks from one to two and that's kind of nice honestly I i'd almost be tempted to say they should do this in pve as well um some of the abilities are so expensive in pve they actually feel a little underpowered i think um across the board to be frank um because they're very expensive sometimes which you know is, is fair enough i mean you know fireband's pretty good uh but i think that some rebalancing here could be something worth looking at uh as well but overall i am pro mantra change i think the mantras are more interesting this way they're more interactive uh there's more decision making and i think they also have counterplay and counterplay is very 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 important um in competitive modes especially. Another quality of life here, Willbender Virtues, no longer remove the active effects of other Willbender Virtues. This is actually a, this might not seem that big, but I think it actually is pretty big. So one, a lack benders in real life. That's big. That's actually super sick. This means that you can keep your alacrity application with your F2 and your sustain while also using all of your other virtues, like getting more damage out with your um, F1, uh, your F3 for spamming stability as well. 
actually really nice. I think this is actually really, really cool. This is a big buff basically everywhere across the board. Because now in PvP, right, now you can use your sustain and regenerate health by attacking. But you can also then be offensive. Or you can use your... Uh, you can use your stability in Aegis on your F3 to leap in and do damage, and then immediately go into a punch. And you still have that stability application that will keep ticking away when you go into other abilities. Big, big buff to Willbender. Uh, I actually expect to see a lot of experimentation with Willbender in, in PvP for sure, at least in ranked, I think, Willbender. This will really help it with its sustain. Um, and also, uh, really cool for PvE as well. Uh, and, well, I guess World Buster World 2, right? We're throwing it all in there. And Willbender, funnily enough, actually, um, is going to... Uh, you know, Willbender already does see some play in World Buster World, and this will, of course, just help it, right? Sustain itself a bit more. Uh, yeah, I like that. Really cool change. You know, I did kind of like the RP of, you know, you you change your stance when you use a Virtue, but I can understand this. I, I think that it was a little bit too limiting as a mechanic, uh, potentially. Um, for sure. So, I get it. I get it. I think that's everything on Guardian, right? Yeah, we did. we got Guardian, though. So, some pretty fun stuff there. Major thing is the mantras, of course. Ooh, mantras V2. Mantras uh, version 2 or part 2 with Mesma coming on up right now. Uh, let me quickly just jiggle around a little bit so I don't get DC'd. We have that nice, relaxing music going on there. We really do. We love to see it. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So... Fun stuff on Guardian, I think. Some good improvements overall. The Return of Firebrand, Dragon Hunter getting pushed a bit in PvE, which is always good. Fun hammer reworks as well. And some fun stuff with Willbender overall as well. We love to see it. Okay. So, we'll do, we'll just do Mantras immediately uh, on Mesmer, I guess. That seems to make some sense. But the exact same thing has happened to Mesmer Mantras. Here we go. So, Mesmer Mantras are a little bit different. Okay, um, Mesomantras, you gain an effect when you finish channeling them, rather than the final charge. So this is that, this is kind of the dynamic here, and this is how it's going to go. So, Mantra of Recovery, you're going to heal yourself, and then AoE heal allies. Mantra of Concentration, you're going to give Aegis and Stability to nearby allies when you finish charging it. Mantra of Distraction, you're going to recharge your F3, um, partially. Mantra of Pain, you're going to give AoE Might to nearby allies. And um, Mantra of Resolve, you're going to remove all conditions from you and remove uh, three conditions from nearby allies as well. Uh, and again, it's actually worth noting that you can still just sit there with your mantras and let it recharge without recharging it. So for example, let's imagine that we're using Mantra of Resolve to say remove conditions on Doom or on Sloth, right? We can just use one charge. We don't have to recharge it. Right, that's not um, that's not necessary. Yeah, you can see here we out cherry tooltip. Aret has brought in the juice. You can see here that we ooh ooh look at look how look at that guys. Four stacks of stability when you charge it. AOE six hundred radius and an Aegis. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that is a skill right there. I mean that's a nice thing to charge. Bear in mind, um, if you're say a Chronomancer, if you have quickness, that's gonna charge pretty fast. Right? It's a two and a quarter second charge time, right? And um, that's going you know, to be you know, shortened significantly if you have quickness. So you can be quite responsive and quite reactive um, with this ability to give that stability and Aegis to allies with a very hefty duration. Again, if let's say we're playing a Chrono Monster in PvE or in World vs. World. That's going to bump up a lot. You're going to have a, uh, you're gonna have a, high, um, a high duration of stability with that, which is very, very nice. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, and in general, all these abilities are very nice. And I, I, funnily enough, I think this actually really helps uh, legitimize Heal Chronomancer um, as well, actually. Um, because, of course, Heal Chrono uh, utilizes mantras and wells. And this really helps out with that. Because now spamming these mantras is going to generate you a lot of healing, right? Um, in this regard, you're going you're gonna to generate a good chunk of healing by spamming those mantras. I still think the boon application of heal chrono is still mediocre. They made a few changes to this here. They made the protection application um, kind of bit... This is a weird change. We'll talk about... Oh, this is a very weird change. They basically made the boon application a little bit better for um, chrono in PvE. I actually don't think it's enough. I'm going to be a doomer here. I'm actually not impressed uh, by this. Well of action gives might and fury. So I guess you give like... You can probably give nearly 25 might on this build, especially with the mantra uh, on some kind of quickness chrono build or even a DPS quickness chrono build. I don't think I'm super impressed um, by this. Like, compared to Herald, uh, compared to Firebrand, uh, it ain't there yet. Um, 
in my mind. Chrono does have really nice utility, but I do think it's not quite there in what it can actually deliver and bring to the table in that regard. Definitely an option, right? To be clear, if you like um, Tank Chrono, Quickness Chrono, this is a very strong build. You're perfectly good to go to play this 100%. You should never go like, oh, I don't want to play, right? I don't want to play, right? Um, but still, it's pretty big. It is pretty big in that regard. Uh, needs a bit more work. I think. Uh, but yeah, mantras are juicy. And yes, um, the mantra did already give stability. I'm aware of that. But the point is, is that now you get it when you charge it and it also gives Aegis as well. Uh, in addition to when you use one of those charges. And, and utilizing that recharge effect is going to be effective. Because bear in mind, here, do you know what the key nuance is here, guys? Mesma mantras, if you burn them, you can get them back quicker. This is, the, this is why I like this. This is why I think it's interesting and interactive. Because um, if you wait for the count recharge, it's slow, right? However, if you burn it, burn both charges, the cooldown is much shorter. So you can then recharge it to get value out of it again. Yeah? And this is why I think this is quite good. Because right now, Mantra Concentration, yeah, you get stability on demand. Lovely. Yeah, who doesn't love that? It's good stuff. But what's important to note is that the cast time, or rather the count recharge, is quite slow. But when we have this new system, you'll be able to burn it and then recharge it pretty quickly, which I think is pretty good. In general, still pretty decent, guys. It's it's uh, it's not too bad. Uh, and I'm actually very excited to see what builds you can kind of come up with here. Again, I think that the Chaos trait line probably needs a bit of work, you know, <laughs> gonna bring back Chaos Chrono to really bring Chronomancer back to its former glory, because that seems to be the way it is. If you look at all of the quickness providers, they have very good boon application. Um, and Chronomancer, I feel like it's a little bit behind there. A big part of that is actually because of how competitive the utility skills are, I think, on Mesmer. Mesmer really struggles to fit everything you want onto the same build, whereas realistically, Herald and Firebrand kind of don't even scrap it to an extent. Like, Herald and Firebrand, it's the complete package, right? Whereas Mesma, it has loads of really good tools and loads of good pieces of the puzzle, but you can't have them all at once. To be honest, you could argue that's more of a problem with Herald and Firebrand, right? Which I would be inclined to agree with, of course. Um, but still, I think there's, there's something that it does need to be addressed, um, in that regard. Bit of a, a buff, uh, for PvP and World Boss, sort of egotism doing more damage. And there was this, like, moment where everyone was like, oh shit, Chrono's back in PvP with the Power Chrono build. But then people kind of were like, uh, actually, maybe not so much. It's kind of annoying, but once you figure out how to play against it, uh, okay, yeah. Easy peasy. And also, the only people who play Mesmer, which was, um, it was, a uh, Rip, right? He was like, he played one monthly, then quit. Uh, so yeah, we need some Mes we need some Mesmer players back. We need Misha back, right, to show us the way when it comes to Mesmer. Uh, in this regard, um, before we move on to kind of mopping up some of these changes here at the bottom, uh, I think we should talk about some really fun stuff uh, for uh, for World versus World. Actually, I think is a big target here. They f they did it. They did it, gamers. They have done it. Temporal Enchanter is back. It is back, my friends. Wow. Here we go. Protected Phantasm, which was a trait that... Kind of an interesting trait, but not one that saw a lot of play. Basically, it means that your uh, Phantasms had Aegis. You could do some crazy stuff by, like, having the Aegis transfer to you. Um, if you have the... The, the, the trait that transfers boons to you when the Phantasms die. But other than that, pretty unused trait... But here we go. It has happened, my friends. Protected Phantasms has now morphed. It has morphed, my friends. Into, in my opinion, a pretty cool trait. It does compete with the Focus trait, which is um, definitely a strong trait. This is the master trait in Inspiration. you got to bear that in mind. But it's a very, very powerful thing here. It grants super speed and resistance to allies in the area when you cast a glamour and increases the glamour duration by one second. Basically, this is Veil, right? Uh, veil, Null Field, Time Warp, all that kind of stuff. These are very, very famous. And of course, um, 
incredibly uh, iconic abilities in World Buster. When you drop your veil, then your entire Zerg goes through. Now, that potentially means that everyone's going to get resistance and super speed as well. It depends if they target cap that or not. We'll have to see how this actually works. Right, in an area seems to imply that it might not actually affect everyone um, necessarily. Uh, but still, really, really nice. Uh, to have that back. This is a very famous, very well-loved trait. Now you've got super speed back on Chronomancer. And a little bit on Time Warp, too. Time Warp is going to give super speed and chill enemies. And the cooldown's going down to 120 to 75 seconds. I think Gravity Well is so good that I'm not really sure if I'm seeing that. I think it might see some maybe some niche play in PvE where you really want super speed or something like that. But it is an immobile feel, and honestly, Scrapper is so much better for super speed anyway. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, but but yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see about that one uh, overall. But actually really cool. Uh, and I think this is part of the desire. And this is true of the mantras as well, I think. Uh, ArenaNet want to take Chronomancer in World vs. World. And move it from, and of course in PvE too. And move it from just a, a utility thing. Right, you know, a, a Swiss Army knife build and kind of mold it into more of a well-rounded thing, right? This is their goal is, is so that builds aren't ultra, ultra niche all the time. They actually are robust and can function on, you know, just very much in a self-contained manner, which I think is cool. Right, which, you know, which is good. So, you know, so you can have, like, potentially Chronomancer filling that just generalist support role with good boon application, good healing, good uh, Comni cleanse and so on using these mantras, uh, using these glamour traits and the inspiration trait line. We're still having some really cool uh, big CCs um, kind of across the board there. You know, your gravity well, your focus pull, uh, boon removal and so on. Just the classic utility that the Mesmer brings to the table. So I like the direction this is going. Um, this is definitely going to be a nice thing for your Mesmers to be playing around with in World vs. World. Mm, yes, very nice. So, um... Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot to mention this, but it's also worth knowing that this trait has a real tough time in any competitive mode, um, as Grimjack has just pointed out here, because it competes with the Boon Rip trait, which is a god mode trait, so yeah, unlucky. This is a very PvE-oriented trait a lot of the time. So a few kind of little tweaks here to the way Chronomancer works. Um, this is an interesting one. So this is a weird way to buff this, by the way. Um, so... Echo of Memory. When you block, the Phantasm immediately spawns. If no attack is blocked, the Phantasm will still be summoned at the end of the channel. Okay. So, very strange here. Uh, so, their goal with this is that you can block, summon a Phantasm, cancel your block, block again. Okay. This is weird. Uh, and there, I think, again, this is attempting to nudge, one, the boon application of Chronomancer, more protection uptime, and more damage output as well, right? Their, their goal is to make this better than just auto attack. Because, yeah, again, the, the issue is here is that sword, uh, shield 4 is not a DPS increase. So in other words, your protection, it comes at a fairly big expense to the user. It's a weird way to buff it. To be honest, I would just say screw it let's just make it do more damage and the protection is a bigger radius I, I think the radius is a huge problem here herald protection is 600 mesmer protection 240 and it's weird because the phantasm like randomly spawns like Ugh. yeah i'm uh not uh i'm not that impressed guys i'm not impressed and yeah i think grim's right here as well it, it definitely means so if it's a bit more like full counter in a way right like you need to not uh not hit the block otherwise you'll get the phantasm which i think is pretty fun uh it's more you know it's, it's, it's a bit more interactive from the perspective of the attacker you still do get the phantasm at the end so you're gonna have to potentially dodge that but hitting it gets a little bit more punished too which i think is pretty cool tied to time cancelling uh, catching the return wave while under the effects of continuum shift will now also reduce the recharge of the skill after exiting continuum shift increase the number of might sacks from five to eight in pve only again this now is really going to help your might application with well of action tied to time maybe the mantra too you're really going to be stacking up a lot of might on chrono and maybe i'm being a little bit harsh on chrono now that i'm looking at this if chrono can do 25 might solo that is actually pretty nice i don't think it makes it herald but 25 might on its own is actually a Bit undervalued right mirage is very good for this exact same reason it can do 25 might while giving alacrity 
if Chronomancer can do, say, 25 might or very high might output using some of these mantras and then, of course, these other core Chronomancer abilities, then actually that is worth something, right? You know, that's, that is worth a damn, to be honest, uh, and at least worth considering. I'm still not a huge fan of how Chrono plays out. I, I do kind of miss the old days. I'm a little bitter on this regard. You know, I, uh, I miss old Chrono, guys. Old Chrono was more fun. Um, but... You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta keep up with the times, guys. You've got to, uh, you gotta keep up with reality, I suppose. So we can't, we can't be stuck in the past forever. And Well of Senility now dazes enemies on the final pulse in addition to removing boons. I just don't like the Chrono Wells. Uh, that much, to be honest. I don't like them. Um, and I guess this is pretty nice, you know, a bit more CC and you also remove boons. And I can see that even being a little bit, uh, in a, in a way it's not that annoying in PvP, right? Because you can move out of it to avoid the daze, but... Yeah, uh, no, I think you've got to be a little bit careful. Chrono is one of those things that in PvP has the ability to turn into a complete monstrosity. Um, it really, really does. Watch out for that one, guys. Watch out. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, the last few remaining tweaks, they fixed a bug on Virtuoso that made Psychic Repost not work properly and you didn't get unblockable for the entire Shatter. That's pretty funny. Unlucky there. Um, they also went ahead and buffed some of the other basic abilities here too. Mass Invis, uh, cooldown is down to 48 in PvE. This is because you get the trait for free now. Manipulation just have the trait for free, basically, right? Um, in this regard, which is kind of nice, I guess. Hey, you know, your HTCM, you got even more stealth now. And certainly it makes a Mesmer for PvE a very compelling stealth option without necessarily having to take the trait. Mimic cooldown going down as a baseline. Uh, that actually just helps in PvE just flat out. It's actually a bit more than 20%, I believe. That's more of a 33% reduction. Uh, towards that. Uh, that just helps out if you have Mimic, and you can Mimic your Signet, you can Mimic your uh, Well, for example, and just get lots of value out of that. Um, Mirror cooldown is going down to... This is... I think this heal skill actually has seen play at some point, because it's just a decent heal that has a low cooldown. Uh, 12 seconds in PvE. Pretty juicy, to be honest. Uh, but I think the other Mesmer skills, particularly the Signet, is just so powerful that realistically you're going to be stuck on that one for a very long time. And Master Manipulations, you now uh, you gain Aegis on nearby allies when you use a Manipulation. As opposed to Super Seed. Because now the Super Seed has been moved to Inspiration instead, right? Which, to us, is probably a little bit of a better place for it, I want to say, actually. Um... Maybe, yeah, kind of. I mean, the Chaos trait line is pretty good. This is where I must admit. And this was competing with Illusionary Defense and Method of Madness. Those traits are actually pretty solid um, overall, actually. Especially Method of Madness is actually a really nice trait uh, to have there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. they could have also put it in Inspiration. But then that would have made Inspiration very stacked for um, ability adjusters, which is maybe not what they want to do. But we'll see. We shall see. Just a few buffs there. I think some of this stuff not super significant. Um, I, I think, weirdly enough, looking at these changes, and honestly, when you're looking at this stuff from a PvP perspective, I think a lot of builds are going to get a hell of a lot better because stuff's getting nerfed, right? As we'll see later, Spellbreaker is getting nerfed, Catalyst is getting nerfed, Vindicator is getting nerfed, and that will actually allow other builds, stuff like potentially Chronomancer, stuff like Virtuoso, to breathe a little bit more, which I think is pretty helpful. So I think that's just about it for our Mesmer here. Necromancer, um, getting a little bit. Nothing too crazy for Necro here. Uh, basically, Warhorn core cool direction for free. Nice on Scourge, which you very commonly use this as your offset to get a bit more crowd control, a bit more swiftness on there. Dagger is being buffed, and you get more life force now as well, uh, alongside Life Siphon doing more damage. Uh, Buffed by 50% actually, well, you know, 20% extra damage against Bleeding Foes to 50% in PvE. Um, Dark Pact doesn't corrupt boons anymore, but it does remove, uh, removes boons and removes three in PvP and PvE and then two in World vs. World. While also immobilizing and now actually applying bleeding to the target and yourself to synergize with Life Siphon. To be honest, this is more of a, we're going to make this weapon less bad rather than we're going to make it good. I don't think this actually changes anything, really. Um, don't think so. Uh, you're very, yeah. In PvP, you're using Staff and you're using Axe Focus, say on Reaper. Um, in PvE, you're not using Dagger, right, on... On Reaper, for example, I don't see it. The, you're going to use... I mean, the Life Force generation is actually really nice for Scourge, for Heal Scourge, for example. 
Uh, but elsewhere, eh, it's very, very shockingly mediocre, I think. And I'm not very impressed um, by Dagger. I actually think they should move Dagger into a, like a support weapon, right? And make it like a sacrificial, vampiric, restoring allies, you know, by doing, you know, evil, uh, evil blood rituals to sustain your teammates. That kind of stuff. Lead into the blood magic thing for Necro, you know what I mean? Um, on Dagger, rather than trying to make it a power DPS weapon. But not really that much here uh, for Necro. A um, few reworks here to Reaper. You don't get um, recharge on shouts. You get them for free instead. So your soul is minus 16 second cooldown now. 16 seconds on nothing can save you. 32 seconds on rise. 16 seconds on suffer. You're all weaklings on 20 seconds. And again, this is actually surprisingly big. I think this is more of a... I'm not sure. We'll have to see the numbers. We can't really talk about this just yet for PvE. Um, but for PvP, honestly, um, this heal skill is already good for Reaper in PvP, actually. Uh, it's a very short, uh, cooldown, and heals a lot, generates you a shit ton of life force that helps you get into your damage phase and go big. And you don't want that trait anyway, you want to take the, you want to take the, uh, explosion thing. So you have more chill applications, you do more damage, you can slow your target down anyway. So this is just a straight up little buff to Reaper, right? Little buff to Reaper, we love to see it. Of course, incredible um, in World vs. World, because you always... Uh, and all these shouts work pretty well in World vs. World, because you always hit your five targets, right? Uh, but now, they've changed the mechanic. It's now no longer based off targets. It's now... Per, if you're... Um, you gain life force per target struck within melee range of the caster. So it's really rewarding you for getting in melee range, um, and hitting as many people as possible when you're in melee, promoting that melee playstyle there as well. Alongside a cooldown reduction, I think this actually works out pretty well. I don't know what they mean by melee range. They probably mean within... They probably mean within 240 range, I want to say. I think is probably what they mean by that. So you're going to have to be really in there, which of course is going to be easy to activate in, say, World vs. World. Not super easy to activate in uh, PvP, but then again, you didn't necessarily always have a million targets in PvP, so you you can probably get some decent value here, uh, kind of just across the board uh, with this stuff. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Some slight buffs here. Uh, stun break cooldown going down is pretty nice. Uh, but th again, Necro has a really big problem right now in PvP, is that, again, the meta is very oriented around... Um, it's very oriented around mitigation and having evasion blocks etc necro is quite locked into its utility skills especially on reaper it's very hard to fit other skills in because you're almost always going to be running um fear ring to to basically buffer for people um you want the worm so you can get out you want spectral so you can kite super hard to fit these skills in maybe it's doable uh to be honest maybe we'll see uh if it's gonna happen um, but we'll, we'll, I'm a little bit skeptical of shouts, at least in PvP. Uh, if the damage is, like, super insane on something like nothing can save you, maybe that's good. But again, Necro in PvE already has wells, right? And you have Signet of Spite for damage. So, it, it yeah. Uh, it, it, this is almost like, it doesn't feel like necessarily a, it feels like a bit of an RP change. Stuff like nothing can save you, obviously, um, very good in World vs. World, right? Because you can remove boons and become unblockable, which is super nice. Uh, you can transfer conditions that suffer. This is going to potentially transfer 10 condies um, from the stream on a very short cooldown, which could be really, really, really good, actually. Um, and I guess this does buff Condi Reaper, yeah, because Suffer is good on Condi Reaper. Uh, two in that regard. Chilled to the Bone. This should be really nice, I think, for PvP, because this is now a 36 second cooldown. Um, although, actually, I think it's longer in PvP, actually, I believe. Um, but still, a very, very short cooldown elite skill here. Um, that will now give you stability when you're attacking in, you know, when you're in melee range. A lot of stability when you're in melee, by the way. Um, and, of course, a very short cooldown, a relatively short cooldown. A very hefty stun and chill effect, which is really nice. Uh, this is already being used in PvP, by the way. Lich kind of fell off. Um, and certainly, I've been playing a bit of Reaper in PvP. And I found Chilled to the Bone incredibly powerful, actually. And, um very useful so seeing the cooldown go down is always going to be nice right like who's going to be sad about that one wait uh, it is longer in pvp right it has a longer cooldown right yeah it does it's 60 seconds yeah okay yeah, yeah. 
So it will be 48 seconds now. That's honestly pretty nice, uh, to be honest, uh, in PvP. They also made some attempt to buff Chilling Victory and Blighter's Boon. Um, spoiler alert, I these the other Reaper traits are so good. No. Um, this is probably not gonna happen. I don't think these is, these are good. Like, the other GM trait here, this is the quickness trait. Blighter's Boon is competing with, um, Reaper's Onslaught. No way are you ever dropping that, to be honest. And Chilling Victory, that's Decimate Defenses and Soul Eater. Both amazing traits. If these are gonna compete, they're gonna have to be a hell of a lot better. They talked about maybe making it so, um, removing boons gives you loads of healing. So you're really tanky, and that's definitely a little promising, potentially. Uh, particularly is, to be frank, Perma Quickness and PvP is not super healthy, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, uh, that could be interesting down the line, but no, it's not there yet. I'm surprised they didn't just buff a bit of the damage on Reaper. I mean, Reaper is still a little bit behind. I believe it's around a 35,000, uh, damage benchmark in PvE. I thought they just could have nudged the damage just, like, by 10%. Uh, well, actually, no, like, 5%, actually? 5% will be 1,700. That will put it about 37k. Yeah, maybe, like, 5%, maybe 6%. Uh, DPS increase to Reaper overall, so I'm very surprised I didn't go for that. And as a bit of a point of note there, guys, if you see 3% damage increase, 5% damage increase, bear in mind, that's a big deal when the numbers we're dealing with are pretty big, right? You know, even then, 10% damage buff to Reaper, that would be 3.5k extra more damage. That would be like 38.5k DPS, which to be honest, that would actually be leaning a little bit into being a bit overpowered. Uh, to be frank, actually, in uh, in PvE, uh, you couldn't go much further than that um, with a build like Reaper that has, you know, it's very durable, has really good AoE, really good CC, necromancy utility skills, all that kind of stuff. Um, you've got to be a little bit careful there uh, with that. You could maybe push it at 38.5. Maybe you could do 10%. But still, I think I'd like to see that. But hey, they can't do everything in one go, I guess. They can't do it all, guys. Can't all happen.